We often need to extract specific data from large data sets to make informed decisions. But manually filtering data via filter buttons every time can be time consuming, especially when working with dynamic data because you have to reapply the filter to display the updates. In this video, I'll show you a powerful combo for creating an interactive real-time data extraction tool that automatically updates with changes to your data that most users overlook. It's perfect for sales data, inventory tracking, employee records, and more. You can also grab the example file from the link in the video description. Okay, let's dive in. I'll demonstrate with this customer sales transaction data with columns for the customer's name, product, category, purchase date, and amount. The first thing I'll do is format it in an Excel table, which will make it easy to reference, and any changes or additions to the table will automatically be included in the filter. The keyboard shortcut to format the data in a table is Control T. It's detected that my table has headers, so I'll simply click OK. This opens the Table Design tab, and you can see my table's been given the name Table 1, and I can change that here by just typing over it, but I'm going to leave it as is. The first thing I need is a list of the customers' names to populate my drop-down list. Now I want them sorted, so it's easy to search, so I'll start with the sort function. Next, I need to use the unique function to extract the list of customer names. Notice as I select the column header, Excel automatically puts the table and column name into my formula. These are known as structured references, and they're just an alternate way you can reference cells that not only makes it easier to see what's being referenced in the formula, but if I add any data to this table, the formula will automatically include it. So I'll go to close parentheses on unique and on sort, press enter, and because this is a dynamic array formula, when I press enter, the results spill to the cells below. Okay, that's my customer names. Let's give it a heading, and we'll just give it a bold and underline. Next, I have a sheet here for my filtered version of the data. Now I'm going to build this next part step by step, and then come back and automate and enhance different elements. So stick around to see all the bells and whistles. We'll start with a heading for the name, and I'll control B to make it bold. And this is where I'm going to insert my data validation drop down list. On the data tab, data validation, I want to allow a list, and the source is my list of names here. Here's the trick. Because this is a dynamic array formula, instead of referencing a range of cells, I can simply type a hash sign after the first cell reference to reference the whole spilled array. This way, as new names are added to the sales data table, the unique formula will include them, and my data validation list will too. I'll click OK. And now if I click on the list, you can see I've got the names available to select. All right, next I'm going to copy the headings from my table here that I want returned in my table. And I'm just going to Control Shift V to paste them in as values. Let's go and make them bold and give it a bottom border. Now I'm ready to get the data. And for this, I'm going to use the filter function. The array is the data that I want to extract, which is from my table. And I want the product through to the amount columns. Again, it's inserted the structured reference, which is the table name, followed by the column names. Comma, the next argument for filter is what I want to include. And that's going to be where the customer name equals the name selected from the drop down list comma, and the last argument is the value to return if there are no matching results. You can leave it blank or return a message like no purchases found. Close parentheses on filter, press enter, and there's my results. Again, it's spilling an array of results based on the name selected in the drop down list. I can select a different name and we get a new list of results. And let's just quickly format this column with comma separators to make it consistent and easy to read. By the way, if Excel formulas ever feel overwhelming, or you just want to get better at using them in real world scenarios, I have an advanced Excel formulas course where I guide you through the most powerful functions step by step. Plus, you get my personal support. You'll find the link in the video description and pinned comment. Okay, so far so good. But what if we want to sort this data, and we want to choose a different column to sort by? I'll start by inserting a drop down here. This is going to be my sort by option, we'll make it bold, and we're going to insert a data validation list or a drop down list. 
and the source for that list is simply going to be the column names here. Click OK. Now we can choose which column we want to sort by. Let's go with category. And then all I need to do is wrap my formula in the sort function. So the array is going to be the array returned by filter. And then comma, my sort index is going to be the column number that I want to sort by. Well, I've chosen category here. So I need to convert the name category into a number that represents the column number in the array I want sorted. So that would be column two for category. And we can use match or X match. Let's go with X match. I'm going to look up this value in this array and X match will tell me what number category is in this array. So that will give me column number two. And then I want to specify whether I want the data sorted in ascending or descending order. Let's go with one for ascending for now. We'll close parentheses on sort, press enter. And now my data is sorted alphabetically based on the category column. But I can change that quickly and sort by amount and so on. Easy. But what if I want to change the sort order? I might want to sort in descending order. Well, let's insert another parameter. We'll call this one order and we'll make it bold. And in here, we'll add another date validation list. This time, I'm just going to type them in. So we want ascending and descending. Click OK. Let's choose one. Now I need to modify my formula here. So instead of having this hard keyed sort order parameter, I want it to be based on the values chosen in the drop down list here. However, sort requires a one or a minus one. So I need to switch this text into its numeric equivalent and we'll use the switch function for that. What are we switching? We're switching this value. And if it's ascending, it'll be one. And if it's descending, it'll be minus one. Close parentheses on switch, press enter. And now if I choose descending, we see the sort order switches based on the purchase date. Let's change it to amount so it's easier to see. Currently descending, let's change it to ascending. Job done. Lastly, let's add an amount for the total. And we can use the sum function here to sum the amounts. Press enter. And there's my total. However, what happens if I choose a different name here? Let's look for Amelia Carter. She's got quite a few entries. And if we look now, we can see the sum formula doesn't include all of the data. We could, of course, sum way more rows or even right down to the very last row. But if we do that, let's simulate this. We'll add some more rows, press enter. Now it includes all of the values. But if someone goes and enters a rogue number here, we end up with the wrong total. Instead, I can make the total dynamic by referencing the dynamic array returned by filter with choose calls. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to replace that reference with choose calls. And choose calls allows me to specify which column I want from the spilled array. So first of all, we need to reference the spilled array. Notice it enters the hash sign which is the spilled array reference. And then I just need to tell it which column from that spilled array I want returned. Well, the amount is the fourth column. So we type in four, close parentheses on choose calls, close sum, and now we get the correct result. And if I choose a different person here, we'll select Sebastian Ward, for example. And if I F2 to edit, you can see it's correctly referencing all of Sebastian's data. If we go back to Amelia Carter, it adjusts accordingly. For this technique, you need Microsoft 365 or Excel 2021 or later. But don't worry if you have an earlier version of Excel because you can use pivot tables to achieve a similar result. Let me quickly show you. So I'll start by inserting a pivot table on a new worksheet. Click OK. Let's drag the field list over closer to the action. And here I want the product, category and purchase date in my row labels and the amount in the values area. We'll go up to the design tab and we'll change the report layout to tabular. Let's also get rid of subtotals and we'll repeat all item labels. All right, right now we're seeing everyone's data. Let's add a slicer for the customer name. Just right click, add as slicer and it's behind the pivot table field list. Bring it up here. Let's make a load more space for it and 
I'll just quickly go into the slicer tab and we'll give it three columns and we'll just resize it there. So now I can choose Amelia Carter and I only see her data. Likewise for Carter Powell and so on. Now if you want to sort the data, you can right click and go into sort, sort largest to smallest. Notice though that it's sorting within each product group. However, you have some other sort options available via the drop down on each column. Here you've got the standard sort A to Z or Z to A, but we can also go into more sort options. And in this dialog box, you can choose ascending or descending by the items in the column or some of amount. And depending on the choices you make in this dialog box, you can also go into more options and you'll get some further choices that you can make. And I'll leave you to explore these in your own time. Pretty cool. It still amazes me what we can do when we combine a few features together. Now, if you don't already have your spreadsheets updating themselves, then check out this video next to see how to make Excel do the work for you. I'll see you there.